So I ordered this yarn from Amazon thinking that I was getting a deal, thinking, oh, it's going to come quickly. Oh, it's a good price. <laughs> Charity and make whatever from your fashion to your comfort Anything you need, know she got it covered, it's like magic Never doubt the passion, thread the work, never lacking Take notes, need a mover out of habit Nick girl magic Hello, how are you? I'm fine. It's nice to see you here on my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Charity and I am from a small town in North Carolina where I live with my husband and our two children, Aiden and Aubrey. We've had quite a few new subscribers join us over the past month and a half since I last recorded a video. Um, so welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate every person who likes, subscribes, comments on my videos. That really helps us to grow this community and this channel. So thank you so much for being here with me today. Today is Friday, December 29th. And it is actually very late. It is 1040 p.m. Hence the cozy <laughs> lighting, I guess you could say. I forgot to light my candle, but it's okay. It's okay. Still cozy. It's really, really difficult to try to film videos during the daylight hours, especially since we don't have as many daylight hours <laughs> with it being winter. So if I have to record at 1030 at night, so be it. I will try my best to be alert and awake and um, eloquent in my speech, which is really difficult. I'm never really eloquent in my speech, but I'm going to try my best, y'all. I'm going to try my best. <laughs> I'm really excited to get into what I have been up to in terms of yarn over the past month and a half. Before we get into the knitting, I will say that I'm going to include a couple of clips of some of the things that my family has gotten up to over the holiday season. We have really enjoyed ourselves um, this Christmas. We've been trying to really focus on celebrating the birth of Christ for Christmas and trying not to put so much focus on presents and getting, you know, gifts, receiving gifts, but trying to make sure that we focus on the true meaning of this season for us, which is the birth of Christ. And we really have had a very memorable holiday because of that. So yes, it's December 29th. We have about two days until um, the new year, 2024. And I don't know at what point this video will get out, but if it happens to be in the new year, happy new year. <laughs> wherever you are. I look forward to seeing the things that I accomplish um, over this next year and I can't wait to see what you'll be able to share with me also. So I do have notes today because I want to make sure that I share everything that I've been thinking about over the past month and a half and just to make sure that I don't leave anything out which I always leave something out but it's okay. <laughs> I have a couple of finished objects, about three of them. Um, I have three things that I am working on. One of those things are inactive. You will see why. And um, some things that I'm thinking about frogging and something that I'm hoping to cast on. So if you're interested in all of that, please stick around. I will try not to be so long-winded that's hard to do when you go so long in between podcasts, but I will do my okay, best. So the first finished object that I want to talk about is actually what I'm wearing. This is the Salty Days sweater, and it's a pattern by Veronica Lindbergh. She also goes by Kuto Vakika on YouTube, on Instagram, wherever you can find her on the internet. I don't remember when I cast it on this sweater, but I know that it generally takes me about two months to finish a project. And I finished this sweater right around the Thanksgiving holiday. In fact, I was able to wear this sweater to my family's Thanksgiving dinner. We traveled with my husband to see his mother 
And so I was able to wear my sweater and I'll insert some footage of me wearing the sweater on Thanksgiving Day. Thank you to my sweet husband for uh, being the photographer for my little photo shoot. <laughs> So Veronica suggests that you use Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair held together with Santa's Garn Double Sunday in this pattern. And with both of those together, she estimates that it will be about a DK weight. But obviously it will be a, a little bit heavier than a DK weight holding both of those yarns together. Instead, I opted to use Knit Picks Wool of the Andes yarn in their worsted weight. And that was definitely something um, that Veronica wrote in the pattern. You could substitute a worsted weight instead of the DK and the mohair held together. So the color that I used is Tranquil. And this is their 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And this was my first time ever working with this yarn. And I have to say that I really, really enjoy it. I find that it's actually very soft, even though it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It felt a little bit rustic in my hands as I was working with it. But since I've blocked it and worn it a couple of times, I think I've worn it about four times now, it actually feels really, really soft. So the needle size that the pattern recommends is to use a US size 8, which is a 5 millimeter needle. And to get gauge, I actually had to size up to a US 10, which is a 6 millimeter needle for the body of the sweater. I also went up to a size 10 and a half for the sleeves because I knit the sleeves, well I knit one sleeve actually two times. So the first time I knit the sleeve using the US 10 which is the same needle that I used for the body and I felt that the fabric was a little bit too tight on my arms and I really can't stand that. So I ripped it out and went up a half a needle size to a 10 and a to a ten and a half and I mean it feels better definitely on my arm but as you can see I kind of have excess fabric here so I could have and should have just used the same needle size that I used for the body blocked the sweater first before making the decision to go up a needle size so that was a lesson learned um, but I think I'd rather have the sleeves be a little bit loose than too tight but I think that with blocking I would have been okay going with the same needle size for the body and the sleeves. So for this pattern I decided to knit the size medium and I kind of went back and forth about knitting the size medium and the size small on this pattern because I wanted to make sure that I would have the amount of ease that was recommended in the pattern. So Veronica suggests that you choose a size that is 6 to 8 inches bigger than your bust circumference, bust circumference so that you'll have a slightly oversized look. So my bust circumference is around 36 inches depending on if I measure correctly, what time of the month it is, all of that good stuff. Um, and so if I were to knit the size small, that would have given me about eight inches of positive ease, which would have been fine. But I noticed that my gauge when I did swatch seemed to be a little bit tighter than her gauge. And I wanted to account for that. So I decided to go up to a size medium instead. And I knew that that would give me about 13 inches of positive ease if my gaze if my gauge was consistent throughout the knitting of the sweater. So I did decide to knit the size medium and as you can see in the photos that gave me a lot of positive ease. So when I measured and calculated a, about how much positive ease that I have after blocking, I actually have about 11 
inches of positive ease in certain portions of the sweater. <laughs> so when you look at the design of the sweater, you can see that there are sections with different motifs. So you've got this diamond section here, you've got this cabled section here. If I stand up at the bottom, you'll see you have the two by one ribbing. So depending on which section you measure, <laughs> Um, you'll actually get a different amount of positive ease. So I measured what I think is my bust circumference today. And around here where the cabled section is, I actually have about 16 inches of positive ease. But when I measured the actual ribbing, which is what you use to make your gauge swatch, I do have about 11 inches of positive ease. So... That's just something to kind of keep in mind, especially for me if I knit patterns like this in the future. Obviously, and I'm so glad that Veronica didn't expect you to make a gauge swatch for each section. I would never do that. But she instead had you make a gauge swatch for the ribbing, which I guess makes up most of the sweater. That being said, it... it I don't think it looks like I have different amounts of ease in different sections when I'm wearing it, but that is the case when you actually do the math. So that's just something to think about. If I were to knit this sweater again, I do think that I would knit a size small just because I would like to see how it would look with less positive ease. I really do like this oversized look, but I'd also love to see it um, a little more form fitting. So like I said, it took me about two months to finish this sweater. And that's only because of my lifestyle. It's not a difficult sweater to knit at all. I think that it would be quite beginner friendly for your first textured sweater, which it is my first textured sweater. So I finished this sweater right around the Thanksgiving holiday. And like I said, I was able to wear it to my mother-in-law's house for our Thanksgiving dinner. So I knew that I was not going to have time to properly block this sweater, to soak it, to lay it out and all that good stuff. So instead, I opted to steam block the sweater. And Veronica actually includes how she steam blocks in her video tutorial. So I definitely watched that and realized that when I had been steam blocking my garments prior to this, I had definitely been doing it wrong. And I steam blocked it the way she suggested or the way she demonstrated. And it blocked beautifully. I mean, you can see that the texture looks really really nice just with steam blocking it grew so much I was shocked at how much this garment grew without being just soaked and drenched in water but with just a little steam it was amazing so what she demonstrated and what I did was I took my ironing board and laid the sweater out I took my regular smegular old iron that I have I don't have a fancy steamer or anything like that and that that was the same thing that she did and so I laid the sweater down and then I took some um, it looks like a silk shirt but it was definitely polyester <laughs> so I took my polyester shirt that I don't really wear laid it over top of the sweater and I put the iron directly on that polyester shirt and it was able to protect the wool from being felted and you know having too much heat or anything like that and I was able just to run that iron right over top of that layer of fabric and it blocked beautifully so in the future I think that I will continue to use steam blocking especially in the winter months where you really don't like I love to take my sweaters outside lay it on the porch during the day in the summertime and it will dry so quickly but you just can't do that in the winter I mean you can put it out there if you want but it's not going to dry <laughs> so steam blocking for me I think is the way to go as soon as I finish a sweater I want to wear that bad boy and I don't have a week to wait around for it to dry. So I'm so thankful that Veronica included that part of the tutorial in her video so that now I have 
that uh, technique in my tool belt and I will definitely block my sweaters that way from now on in the winter months. But in terms of how this sweater wears, like I said, I've worn it about five time, four or five times now, I'm not quite sure. Um, this yarn is a whole lot softer than I ever imagined it would be just with a little steam blocking and a little wear. So because of that, you can, I don't know if you're able to see, but yeah, you can see that it's definitely peeling in those high friction spots like underneath the arm where I hold my toddler, you know, I carry her around. It's definitely peeling in those areas. So that is something for me to know if I use this yarn in the future that because it is a softer yarn, even though it's more on the rustic side, it does peel um, when you're quite active in the sweater like I am with my kids. In terms of how it feels on my skin, um, I do have to wear a shirt underneath it because I'm quite modest. So I'm always going to wear a, something underneath it just because you've got all that lace work there. Um, so I don't feel any itchiness like on my the core of my body. The only place that I feel itchiness is around my neck, which is typical for me with 100% wool fabrics. Um, that's where I'm going to feel the itchiness, especially when I'm getting warm. On colder days that doesn't bother me at all but if I'm warm I do feel that itchiness but it is definitely something that I can tolerate you know my skin isn't irritated or anything like that but it is a little itchy so if this is a yarn that you're thinking about using that's just something to note in terms of drape I think that this yarn drapes beautifully um, I'm glad that I went up two needle sizes to get the recommended gauge so I think that it drapes the way that it was intended to and this yarn is just really really nice soft drapey it's nice <laughs> so would I use this yarn again I definitely would use this yarn again because it's very affordable the only thing I wouldn't do is order it on Amazon <laughs> So you all know that I have a busy lifestyle. I don't get out much. So I take advantage of shopping online and on Amazon because I'm pretty impatient. So I ordered this yarn from Amazon thinking that I was getting a deal. Thinking, oh, it's going to come quickly. Oh, it's a good price. <laughs> I was actually watching a podcast, um, I think, the podcast is called Denim and Rain. It's a new podcast to me. And she was talking about um, affordable yarns. And she actually had Nitpicks Wool of the Andes on her list of affordable yarns. And she was showing a segment um, how you could go online. And I saw the price. And I was like, excuse me? I'm pretty sure it was $3.99 per skein on the Nitpicks website. I paid about $7.99 per skein on Amazon. That's double the price, double. Um, so I will knit with this yarn again. I think it's lovely. I think there's a huge array of colors that you can use. The color of this sweater is one of my favorite things about the sweater. I will just be more selective and aware of where I choose to order the yarn in the future. That being said, I'm going to order it from the Knit Picks website instead of Amazon. <laughs> In terms of the pattern, I absolutely would and do hope to knit this pattern again in the future i think that veronica did a lovely job um, writing it the video tutorial was very helpful there was a couple of techniques that were new to me such as the decreases along the sleeve there was a decrease called the central double decrease and it's this one right here don't know if you can see it right in the middle of the sleeve that was new to me um, so she just does a really good job of explaining the details and writing in a way that you can understand it and then you also have the video tutorial to accompany it so the pattern was just very well written the 
only hiccup that I had with the pattern. And I noticed that other people had the same hiccup with this pattern. I've heard um, other podcasters talking about it was the chart for one of the diamond sections. So not this one, but this one here. And it's the same chart that you would use for the sleeves as well, because it's a continuous make sure that you can hear me because I think I was covering up the mic but um, the chart that goes along my stomach here it's the same chart for the sleeves there was a part of that chart that was very difficult to other to understand although Veronica did her best to try to explain it it was just very confusing and I had to rip back on the body portion of that chart to try to fix the mistake because I didn't understand the instructions and other people also on Ravel Ravelry commented that they had the same issue. So if you do decide to knit this pattern, just be mindful that chart C um, is the diamond lace section that I'm talking about. There is a part that does get confusing, but lots of people on Ravelry explained how they were able to overcome that and I think that once you overcome that part, you'll be just fine. So that is my Salty Day sweater. And I will say that this is probably the piece that I am the most proud to have in my hand knit wardrobe to date. The second finished object that I wanted to share is a pair of socks. These socks are definitely new to the podcast. I hadn't talked about them before at all, and that's okay. Um, so one Saturday, I was taking Aiden, Aiden is my almost 10 year old, to get his hair done. And um, after we left his hair appointment, I went to one of the local yarn stores in this town that we were in. I stopped in to visit my friend. Um, she just opened up a yarn store. Aiden decided that he wanted a pair of socks. <laughs> So I was very happy to knit him his first pair of socks from me. Well, from anybody for that matter. So like I said, this yarn is yarn that is local to me. Let's see if this is the one. Yes. It's called Cesium Yarn. I believe that's how you say it. Cesium Yarn. And this is their merino sock base, which is 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. And you get 463 yards for a 100 gram skein. This is the colorway popping. I don't think that I said that. <clears throat> so the colorway popping that I'm speaking of is this red and... I think that it's like a dark purple or even a black um, speckled variegation, speckles and variegation in the yarn. So these are Aiden's Christmas-ish socks, I'm calling them. And the reason that I'm calling them Christmas-ish is because obviously you have the red and then I used this teal color, which from far away it could read green but it really is more of a blue green teal color so that's why I say these are his Christmas ish socks not quite green definitely teal <laughs> but these are a Christmas gift um, that I knit for Aiden and so I used the pattern from the crazy sock lady which is pretty much my go-to pattern for socks. That's the only pattern that I use to knit socks, um, her vanilla socks pattern. And Aiden, like I said, is almost 10. And it was just a very special moment when I realized that I could knit an adult size sock for him. <laughs> That's crazy when you just realize, oh my gosh, they're your babies, but they're not babies anymore. They're getting older. Oh my goodness. So I knit the size small for him and they fit him perfectly. 
I do wonder how long he will be able to wear these though because that boy is growing like a weed. He's eating us out of house and home. I don't know how long he'll be able to wear these. Maybe I can squeeze my feet into them when he's outgrown them or we can save them for Aubrey, I suppose. So I still have this much yarn left <laughs> after knitting his size small socks. That's a lot of yarn. I haven't weighed it yet. But I obviously used um, a different yarn for the heel and the toes. So that kind of helps explain why I do have so much yarn left over. The contrast color for the heel and the toe is actually some leftover yarn that I used when I knit my sister-in-law some socks a few months ago. And that yarn was called Life in the Long Grass. And that's actually a company from Ireland. She and my brother brought that yarn back for me as a gift when they went to Ireland in the spring. And so I still had some of that yarn left over and I used that for the contrast color for Aiden socks. And I knit these socks using size one needles, which is 2.25 millimeter. And that's pretty much what I use for all of my socks. And I always do magic loop. I used the same process for him that I do for my socks. I knew that I was making them for him, but I still didn't want to complicate it and make it a stressful situation whatsoever. So I would just try them on him every once in a while. Do we like that length? Yeah, we like that length. And I would stop and, you know, do the next part when I felt like when I felt like um, it was a good enough length for the cuff and the leg and all that good stuff. For the foot, just like I do for my socks, um, I knit until it about covered his pinky toe, or this the foot part of the fabric covered his pinky toe, and when the foot part of the fabric covered his pinky toe, I stopped and did the heel, and it worked out great for him also. So those are Aiden's Christmas-ish socks. He'll be so happy to wear them now. Okay, my last finished object that I want to share is actually something that I don't have with me, but I will insert some footage of me knitting it, and I think I may have gotten one or two pictures of the finished object. But it is the Eyes on Me headband by Drops Design. This is the only free pattern that I have to share today. This headband is actually something that I knit as a gift for Aiden's hairstylist. Um, I was sitting knitting on my Salty Days sweater, I'm pretty sure, as Aiden was getting his hair done. And she asked me if I could knit some ear warmers for her. And I said, of course I can. I could do that pretty quickly. So um, I knit this headband for her so that she could use them as ear warmers. So this pattern calls for you to use Drops Andes from Garn Studio and it's their super bulky yarn. Um, the gauge for this pattern is about 12 stitches per 4 inches. I did not have that yarn so I went to my local yarn store and picked up some Malabrigo chunky wool instead. I knew that this yarn would be perfect because I knit a hat and a headband for me um, at the beginning of 2023 with the same yarn. It is 100% merino wool. It is super soft. It's so comfortable to knit with. Even though it's bulky, it just feels so good in your hands when you knit with it. And to wear it, it's just the softest yarn Ever. and I really enjoyed working with it in the spring I think it was so that's the yarn that I picked to knit her headband with and the color that I used is 862 Piedras. Aiden of course can say that a whole lot better than me. Those of you who have been here for a while know that he is pretty fluent in speaking uh, Spanish so he would definitely uh, tell me that I jacked that word all up. <laughs> And this yarn is not is not quite as bulky as the yarn from Garn Studio. So 
I knew that I needed to add a few more stitches to make sure that I would account for the difference in the weight of yarn. I also used a smaller size needle because that's all I had. So the pattern suggests that you use a size 10.75 needle US and I didn't have that size so I used a 10.5 needle size. But because I knew that my yarn was not quite as bulky and my needle size was a little bit smaller, I added about six more stitches to my needles than were suggested in the pattern. So the construction, oh, I do have some of that yarn left over, by the way. This is how much of the skein that I had left. And I bought one skein. It was very pretty. I think I have some in my hair. Oop, yep. Yeah. And the recipient of this headband actually picked this colorway. And it's not a color that I would pick, but now I feel like I want one in this color. <laughs> so the construction of this headband is actually very, very simple. You knit basically a rectangle for however many inches it says in the pattern and then you stop and you place half of the stitches on hold while you knit the other half to a certain length. Once you get that half, those stitches um, to a certain length, you place those on hold and you knit the other stitches to that same length. So you'll end up with a rectangle that ends with two separate flaps. With the headbands that I've knit or crocheted in the past, um, you usually, what I have done is knit like a smaller or a more narrow rectangle and then twisted the headband as I seamed it. And the reason for the flaps in this headband is that once you knit those flaps separately, you then cross them over and continue knitting so that you have that texture of the twist sort of in the front of the headband. So I thought that was a very interesting way to achieve that look in this headband and it was pretty easy to do. You cross the two flaps and then you continue knitting the rectangle as usual. I think it was about 19 inches long and once you reach that length then you can seam it together using mattress stitch and that's what I did and I think seaming it was the hardest part of the project for me because I was seaming it at the last minute during Aiden's next hair appointment because I knew that I wanted to give it to her for Christmas before we left um, and I was seaming it as my toddler was running around playing you know around me so that was a little bit difficult but we made it through I was able to give her her headband and she loved it but the last thing that I want to say about um, that headband is although I didn't mind knitting it for her I think that she's a lovely person I think that um, she takes really good care of my child so it wasn't a problem to knit it for her, but I didn't really enjoy the process of knitting it for her as I would have as if I were knitting it for myself, if that makes sense. So I'm realizing now um, in this stage of my knitting journey that I don't mind knitting things for other people. However, it does take the joy out of it for me if it's something that they requested. Um, I guess what I mean to say is if I just take it out of the kindness of my heart, if I come up with the idea to knit something for someone, like my sister-in-law, for example, the socks that I knit her, she didn't ask me the knit, to knit them. It was just something that I wanted to do for her. And so I enjoyed that process. She didn't know she was going to get it. I, it was going to be a surprise. And that just was a good experience for me. It was joyful. But when I was knitting this headband, I felt rushed. There were other things that I wanted to be knitting on instead. And so I didn't enjoy that process. So that being said, 
in the future, I think that I won't really oblige people <laughs> when they ask me to knit something for them. Instead, I will kindly say no, you know, I've got all these other things that I want to knit. And I'll just have to come up with a way to kindly say no, unless it's something that I really want to do for someone. Because my knitting time is precious. Um, when I try to cram in a whole bunch of projects, I get a lot of pain, especially if it's a bulky weight project. So I think that I'll stick with just knitting things for me, unless I get the idea to knit something for someone. Does that make sense? It, I know it sounds very selfish, but um, I have to take care of me. I have to take care of my hands. So I can't just go around and knit things all willy-nilly for other people. I do this for me. I do this as a part of my self-care. So I'm going to have to be okay with saying no in the future when someone asks me to knit something for them. That's okay. <laughs> So we're done with finished objects and now I'm going to move on to works in progress. I will briefly talk about some socks that I am knitting for myself. So the day that Aiden and I went and got his hair done and visited the new yarn store that opened up, he picked out the socks for him, the sock yarn for him, and then I picked out some for me. So these are the so socks that I am knitting from the same knitting company that's local to us, Cesium Yarn, and this is also their sock base, so it's 75% superwash merino, 95% nylon, and the colorway for these are Enchanted Village. I'll let you check that out a little bit. So I like using variegated yarns for socks. I think that it's really interesting to see how the yarn works up. It always looks so different worked up than it does in the skein. So I'm enjoying knitting on these socks just like I enjoy knitting on Aiden's. I thought that the dye work in these yarns was very in this yarn was very consistent, very pretty. Um, so I'm interested to see how these will end up looking. But as you can see, it's very pretty. There's some oranges, there's some blues, some dark blues, some light blues. Very, very pretty. And because I had so much yarn left over from the Life in the Long Grass skein that I used in the spring, I wanted to try to finish up using this yarn. And really, I wanted to use this yarn because I think it complements the variegation in this yarn very well. So I am going to try and finish up this skein of this Life in the Long Grass yarn to do heels and toes for my socks as well. So I am not one who enjoys playing yarn chicken, but I do think that I am going to be playing yarn chicken with this one. <laughs> so I didn't weigh the skein before doing Aiden's heels and toes on his socks I always mix up heels toes cuffs anyway I didn't weigh his yarn but I did weigh it for mine because I want to see how much yarn does it really take for me to do heels and toes for a pair of socks for me and I always knit the pair of medium socks for me using the same um, pattern from the crazy sock lady her vanilla sock pattern so for a size medium I'm gonna see if this amount works so I weighed this and I have about 29 grams of yarn I don't know y'all do you think I'm gonna have enough yarn I've never weighed my yarn for a contrast heels and toes or cuffs like none of that so it'll be interesting to see um, because these are socks for me I know that I'll have enough to do at least the heel and the toe for one sock. If I don't have enough yarn to do the contrast color for the second stop sock, I am not gonna sweat it. I got this yarn that I think would look good. This is Aiden's leftover yarn. I have other yarn in uh, my scrap little bag that I could use. So 
it's okay if I actually do run out of yarn, I will figure something out. These are just socks for me. If they don't match, I don't care. It'll be just fine. So this is the first sock. Again, I'm knitting it on size one needles, 2.25 millimeter. I am at the heel of this sock. I always do a heel flap and gusset and then I decrease for the gusset and start knitting the foot. And as I said before, I will let the foot of the yarn cover my pinky toe and that's when I decide it's time for me to stop and decrease and knit the toes of the sock. So this is sock number one. By the time that I see you again, hopefully I'll have both socks finished. Okay, the next work in progress that I have is actually a cardigan. It is my very first cardigan, and I'm super excited about it. So the cardigan that I'm knitting is the Home Cardigan. It is by designer K. Dre. This is the second pattern that I've knit from her. I knit the Harlow sweater from her um, in the spring of 2023. And I know that she writes her patterns very well, so I was excited to knit another pattern of hers. And this is the progress that I have so far. So I have almost one entire sleeve. I am working on the cuff. And I have knit the body and the ribbing for the body. That's the inside or the wrong side. I'll show you the right side. So this is yarn that I've actually shown on the podcast before. I initially thought that I was going to use this yarn to knit the sweater number 14 V-neck by my favorite things knitwear. But when I swatched for that, I couldn't quite meet gauge. And I also just didn't think that the color for this yarn would... I just didn't like the color for that sweater. So I decided to knit a cardigan instead with it. And the yarn that I'm using for this cardigan is Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. Sorry for the paper noise. Is Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. It is their birch tweed colorway, and it's 100% virgin, oh, no, it's not 100% virgin wool. It's 90% wool and 7% acrylic, 3% viscose. And the reason for that is because of the tweedy bits, I'm sure. So the more neutral color is definitely the wool, and then the tweed bits are the ac acrylic, I know. I don't know where the viscose comes in. And I am holding that together with Drops Kids Silk Mohair. So this is 75% mohair and 25% silk. And I talked about in my last episode how I am really starting to love mohair, um, just the way that it elevates the fabric. I couldn't find those words when I was trying to describe my new feelings for mohair in the last podcast, but my friend Jillian from the Remedy Fibers podcast commented, and she also talked about it in her um, podcast. She mentioned me in her podcast. I that was so kind of her, but anyway, she was talking about how mohair just kind of elevates that fabric and just makes it feel so much more fancy <laughs> and that is how this fabric definitely feels I have knit with the lion brand fisherman's wool just by itself and it feels totally different with the mohair like I said it elevates the fabric it adds a lot more drape it's a lot more soft um, so I am really really enjoying this combination now K. Dre suggests that you use an Aran and a lace to get a bulky weight fabric and I think that that's what I've done here with the fisherman's wool is definitely a very heavy weight of yarn and the the drops kid silk mohair oh I forgot to mention that the mohair that I'm using for this is the color beige which is number 20 so it's just beige 
beige beige smage beige <laughs> the needle size that i used for this cardigan or that i'm using for this cardigan is a size us 9 which is 5.5 millimeter i actually ha had to size down for um the main body of this cardigan to meet gauge which was surprising to me because I usually do knit tighter and have to go up a needle size but for this one I had to go down and so for the body ribbing and for the cuffs I am going to be using and am using a size 8 and then for the button band I'm going to use size 4 which all of those sizes are different than what she recommends in the pattern because for my initial gauge I had to or to get the gauge for my initial gauge swatch I had to size down so those needle sizes are slightly different than what she recommends in the pattern for this cardigan I decided to knit the size small and I think the reason that I did that I was talking to my husband about it is because my salty day sweater is such an oversized fit that made me crave kind of a more fitted look so for this one I am knitting the size small and that should give me about seven inches of positive ease so Kadri actually recommends that you have about eight to ten inches of positive ease for a more oversized look but I opted for a more fitted look so hopefully mine will have about seven inches of positive ease and I was nervous about that uh, I'll be honest with you as I've been knitting this because it was looking quite small when I would try it on I'm trying to like pull the fabric in closer because stockinette obviously rolls up on itself so I'm trying to lay the fabric out to see mm, is this going to fit me is it going to be too small so what I did to kind of ease my concerns was I opted to steam block this um, cardigan as I'm knitting it just to kind of see how the fit would be on me and so just like I talked about, I steam blocked the Salty Day sweater. I steam blocked the cardigan just to kind of see how the fabric would relax. And it did relax quite a bit. It did grow quite a bit. So I think that it's actually going to be a lot more, not oversized, but um, a lot less fitted than I thought. I think it's okay. I'll try to insert some footage of me wearing this so that you can see kind of how it's looking on me so far. So one thing that I did notice for this cardigan was the ribbing at the bottom was looking quite messy. I have been knitting so much 2x2 two two rib, twisted rib um, on my garments lately. It's been a long time since I knit one by one rib and as I was knitting it I really was not happy about how it was looking. It was looking very messy and I know that that's the case for most people when they knit one by one rib. It's very hard to get a very neat and tidy appearance but I went ahead and I continued knitting the ribbing and I'll just give you a close up to kind of see it. It does look So after I steam blocked it, the ribbing does look a whole lot better than it did initially. I thought about ripping it out and doing something different, but I think that it does look better after blocking. But one thing that I did do to kind of remedy that messy look is I tried a new technique. I got this from the Hip Knit Hooray podcast. Um, she was talking about how when she knit her April cardigan, she came across a technique from a knitting channel called 10 rows a day. I was going to say podcast, but it's not a podcast. They just offer a lot of techniques to make your knitting look better, to make you a better knitter. And it's called 10 rows a day. And this technique really makes the one by one ribbing look so much better. you you really can't call it one by ribbing because you're doing something a little different, but I'll just show you what it looks like.
Those stitches are a whole lot neater than the one by one ribbing on the body of the sweater. And I think that that's a technique that I am definitely going to use in the future when a pattern calls for one by one ribbing. And the process of it is very, very simple. And it gives you these elongated, neat looking stitches with very little effort. The only thing you have to do is it's a two round repeat. So on the first round, if you do this in the round, the process is a little bit different if you do it flat. But when you do this in the round, on the first round, you'll knit and purl as usual, knit one, purl one until you get all the way around. And then when you finish the round and you start the second repeat, you slip the knit stitches with the yarn in the back and then you purl the purl stitches per usual. So you slip with the yarn in the back, the knit stitch, purl the purl. Slip the next, the next stitch, purl the next stitch. You get the point. The tutorial explains it <laughs> a whole lot better than I do. But that's all you do. So you do the first round regularly and then you do that little alteration to the second round and you get a totally neater, more tidy look. It's beautiful. It's hard to tell with this fabric because it's so light, but just check out that tutorial and you'll see the difference. I love it. So I plan to finish that technique for this cuff. I have a couple more inches. So a feature of this um, pattern is a longer cuff. And I plan to do that for this cuff, the second cuff. And then I also want to try it for the button band and see if I can have that look a little more tidy as well. So that is my home cardigan by K. Dree. The only thing that I'm nervous about, this has been a very, um, very simple pattern. Her instructions are very, very thorough, very easy to follow. The only thing that I am nervous about is the button band because I've never knit a cardigan before. But I've read ahead, I've looked at some videos online, and I don't think that it will be too difficult. It'll just be a lot of stitches <laughs> to knit and bind off. Oh, I forgot to say that this pattern calls for an Italian bind off or a tubular bind off, which is a sewn bind off. And that obviously is very, very tedious. I've done it before. This time it seemed like it took me forever. I don't know why. Maybe just I had a lot more going on when I was doing um, that bind off, but I did not enjoy it. I really had to push through it for the body of this cardigan. It won't be that bad when I'm doing the cuff. There's a whole, you know, a lot less stitches, but I was reading ahead for the button band for this pattern. And I was like, please tell me, please tell me I'm not going to have to do an Italian bind off for the button band for all those stitches. It's like double the stitches in the body. And yes, that is what the pattern calls for, is an Italian or tubular bind off for the button band. Pray for me in the comments, y'all. I don't know how I'm going to get through that. I mean, I will get through that, I suppose, or I will just do a regular bind off in pattern, you know. I don't know. It just depends on what my mind frame will be what the kids are doing, what season of life we're in when I get to that button band. If I end up with a regular old bind off, y'all know why. But pray for me in the comments. <laughs> pray for me that I can have a nice, neat Italian bind off for the button band. That's the only thing I'm nervous about. We'll see how that ends up. The only other thing I want to talk about, those are my two active works in progress. I put my shift cowl by Andrea Mowry in timeout. I put it in timeout because I had to frog it. I had to frog it because I messed up and I couldn't figure out my mistake. And I was just going to frog it and let it be, put it away, you know, use the yarn for something else. But I started looking at the cowl on Ravelry and looking at Andrea's cowl and everyone who had knit it. And I decided that I do want this cowl. I still want it. I just don't know when I'm going to finish it. <laughs> so I will show you the progress that I have. It's less progress than you saw last time because I ripped it out. 
I started it over and then I just put it down. <laughs> this is it. She's so pitiful. She will be pretty though. I just don't know when I'm going to work on it. I don't know. It's one of those patterns where you have to go line by line and pay attention. It's mosaic knitting. I've talked about it before. It's really not hard, but what I did was I missed an increase somewhere. And I noticed it when I was counting my stitches to enter into another section of the pattern and I didn't have enough stitches and I couldn't figure out where I missed the increase. And I probably, if I was really in a mind, in a state of mind to really concentrate and figure it out, I probably could have figured it out, but I wasn't in that mindset and I just ripped it out frustrated. So it's in timeout. I don't know when I'll finish it. If if I'll finish it, we'll see. To be TBD. <laughs> Another thing that I am going to frog and not continue is my muscle burl hat, muscle bra. Now people are saying muscle muscle bra. It used to be muscle burg, muscle burrow. Now people are saying muscle bra. Anyway, this hat by Isolde Teague. I was knitting, but I've decided I'm going to frog it. And the reason I'm going to frog it is because I am just not enjoying knitting on it. Something about this yarn, you all remember me if you were here in the summer, I was talking about knitting the Air Tea by Ozetta. I had a lot of hand pain as I was knitting that, and I was chalking it up to, oh, my lifestyle, you know, I do a lot of hair. I do, you know. I, I just do so many things with my hands. I attributed all those things to the hand pain that I was having. But as I was knitting on the muscle burrow hat, I was experiencing that same kind of hand pain. And this is a silk yarn, I believe it is. Um, I can't remember what kind of yarn it is, honestly. I'm going to frog it so it doesn't matter, but I know that it's silk and it's very soft and it's very slick and I'm using my Chow Goo Red Lace Needles. So the combination of this yarn, this silk yarn with the these needles, I think is what's hurting my hands and I don't like the colors. Mm -mm, it's not working for me. So I said, am I going to push through and just finish this just to say I did it or am I going to rip it out because I don't enjoy it? And I'm going to rip it out because I don't enjoy it. So instead, I think a better use for this yarn would be to go back and add length to my air tee. Um, I noticed after wearing that air tee a couple of times in the fall that it was just too short. I didn't like the length of it. I have all this yarn left over. I am not enjoying this hat. So instead, I'm going to do sweater surgery or t-shirt surgery on that tee probably this summer so that I can wear it next fall and lengthen the body of that tee. Yep. So that's what I decided. We're going to rip her out. Bye bye muscle bra. Muscle bra. Bye bye muscle bra. <laughs> the only other thing to talk about. Thank you for sticking with me if you're still here. Like I said, I try not to be long-winded, but because I but because I make these videos so sporadically, I it's really hard. It's just hard. But the only other thing that I want to talk about is some yarn that I got I was really laughing at um, Rochelle from Queen's Yarn Boutique and Tie Dye Diva today. They did a, a podcast together and they were talking about the terms that podcasters use and where those names come from. And most people have an acquisitions part of their podcast. And I've never been a really big fan of that term either. So here's some yarn that I got. <laughs> this is San Nesgarn Pure Ghent. And this is a yarn that I wanted to try because I follow the Knit Pearl Girl on Instagram and she was just raving about this yarn and talking about how this has been one of her favorite yarns for 2023. So... I've been just experimenting with using different kinds of yarns. I'm looking for a yarn that doesn't pill so much. And um, I was reading somewhere, I don't know, reviews on this yarn. And someone said that it doesn't pill. 
when I went back to look for that, I couldn't find it anymore. So maybe I made it up in my head, but apparently this is a yarn that doesn't pill. So we shall see. I think that I'm going to use this yarn without mohair just to test it out and see, you know, for my lifestyle when I'm picking up my toddler, is this going to hold up for me? We shall see. So like I said, this is Sandness Garn Pure Gint. I ordered it from a website called Mother Knitter. Um, I actually heard of that website from from the Marissa Made podcast. Um, she talks about how she orders from them. This yarn came very, very quickly. It was around the Christmas holiday. It came with within about a week around that busy time so I was very very pleased um, this yarn is a little more pricey than the knit picks wool of the Andes yarn so even though I paid almost the same amount <laughs> I think I paid about $7.99 per skein of this yarn when the wool of the Andes runs about $3.99 I will put the actual price on the screen if I got that incorrect. But anyway, it's still a reasonably priced yarn. I ordered about 17 skeins of this thinking that I was going to knit the... It was one of those textured sweaters by um, Petite Knit. I couldn't think of her name. But I don't think I want to knit that anymore. I think that I have enough all over texture going on with this sweater so instead I'm looking at two sweaters that I that I want to knit one is the wood anemone pullover by sorry Nordland I like this sweater because you do get a little bit of texture there's a little um, I think it's a flower motif and what is it it's a floral it is a floral motif it looks like leaves to me anyway I think that I'm really enjoying lace, but I don't really want an all over lace pattern. So I think that that would be a good option for me because the lace work is just in the yoke and then you have the stockinette for the body and the stockinette for the sleeves. So this is a front runner for what I want to do with this yarn. I forgot to mention that this is the color lilac and it is 100% Norwegian wool. So pretty rustic. The other sweater that I'm thinking about knitting with this is the Stick Season Sweater by Rebecca Klo. So this pattern has the same idea as the Anemone Sweater where you've got your texture going on at the top portion of the sweater. This texture, texture for me though kind of stops at an awkward place. I don't know that I would want it to stop like right here in the middle of my breast area. I think I would want it to go a little bit lower. So that's why I'm kind of on the fence about knitting this sweater. But either way, I think that these sweaters are absolutely beautiful. The Stick Season sweater also has an interesting detail going along the sides of it. It's a faux seam. That's what it is. So along the shoulder and along the body you have these faux seams and I think that that's very pretty and makes a nice detail on that sweater so those are my two options I know sometimes I can be a little bit flaky I'll present some options of sweaters that I want to knit and then come up with something totally different like I did with my cardigan but it's okay I'm gonna knit what I want to knit I'm gonna knit things that bring me joy and so we'll see which one I end up knitting with this yarn but that is all folks. Thank you for coming out and hanging out with me. Don't forget to like this video, comment in the section down below. Let me know what you were working on. Let me know if you have any advice for me, any tips for any of the things that I am knitting. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Are you eating your M&M's?
sprinkles on this side? Yes. Whatever. Wait a minute. Let me put the ice in there. I don't have enough room. Put a lot of it. Put a lot of it. I can do something with these. Why? Why can do this kind of thing? I feel like at the end. I'll try to find them. I see you got more. I got more. Yes. Pretty.